In this video we're going to learn how to write Django admin action functions. And these are functions that you can write and register with the Django admin UI and they allow you to define some logic that can get called with a range of objects that you select in the UI. In other words, if we look at the Django documentation, the Django admin lets you write and register these actions. They are functions that get called with a list of objects selected on the change list page. If we go to the Django admin UI, we have, for example, some users here and we can select these users and you can see this action drop down and Django ships with one action function and that allows you to delete the selected objects and then you can click go and you're taken to a confirmation page. What we're going to do in this video is write our own custom action functions and register them so that they appear in this drop down list and this will enable us to perform some kind of operation and logic over the selected objects. So we're going to dive in. If you're enjoying this content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Now I have a simple Django app here in VS Code and it contains a single model called order and we're going to work with this model throughout the video. Now the order model has four fields. If you want, you can write this out if you're following along. We have a user and that's a foreign key to Django's built-in user model. We also have an order status and that links to some choices that are defined above using a Django text choices subclass. And there are three statuses and that's pending, shipped and delivered for the order. And finally, we have two date time fields, one for when the order was created and one for when it was last updated. Now, if you're following along, don't forget to make the migrations after you define the model, and then you can run the migrate command, and that's gonna then create the SQLite database, and it's gonna create a table for this order model. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna register the order model with the Django admin, and we're then going to write two admin actions that allow you to update the status of the order. So administrators can go in and they can select orders that have a status of pending, and they can then update them to shipped or delivered, and we'll create admin action functions to encapsulate that functionality. And this is very useful because you can define these action functions. Your administrators can then go into the Django UI and they can perform these actions over a range of objects in the database. Now let's start simple. We're gonna take the order model and we're gonna go over to the admin.py file within this application. And at the top, we're going to import that model from our models.py file. And then we're gonna create an order admin class here. And that's gonna inherit from Django's admin.modeladmin. Now to start with, I'm just gonna pass on this and just below the class, we're gonna use the admin.site.register function. And we're gonna register the order model with this new admin class that we've just written. And we're gonna save the admin.py file. Now I'm gonna go back to the Django admin and let's go back to the homepage. And you can now see the orders model here. It's been registered and it's showing up in the UI. And we currently don't have any orders in the database. Now, if you need to access the admin interface, you can stop the Django development server and you can run the create super user command. And that's gonna create a user that you can then log into the admin. And then you can see basically the screens that I'm seeing just now. Now I'm going to add some orders to this page. You can do that by clicking the button at the top right and you're taken to this form. It's a very simple form for the order. You can tie the order to a given user. And remember that's a foreign key. And the order also has a status. Now in a real system, of course, the orders would be attached to products of some kind, but this is just for demonstration. So we're gonna skip the extra foreign key step. We can save that and I'm gonna add a few more now to this list page. Now I've added five orders here. And what the list page renders out here for each order is the return statement from the Dunder string method on the model. So let's go back to models.py and you can see if we go back here to the order model, we have the Dunder string method and it's returning the string with the order ID as well as the user's username who is attached to the order. Now what I'm going to do is go back to admin.py and we're going to add an attribute to this class here and it's called list display. And we can set this to a list of different fields on the model that we want to show up when we look at the admin UI here. So rather than just seeing the under string output, we might want to see different fields that are on the order class. So what I'm going to do is paste these in and I'm going to paste all of the fields on the model, including the ID. We're going to look at the user who's attached to the order, the status, and also the two date time fields. If we save that, just by adding this list display, when we go back to the admin and refresh the page, you can see we now have a table that contains columns for each of those fields. Now notice that there are different users for different orders and also different orders have different statuses. Now imagine we wanted to update order number five from the status of pending to 
a different status. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so we can see it. Let's say we go into the model here and this is the model's edit page. It's an edit form attached to this model. We can update this and save it and you can see that reflected here. Now the issue with this is that you might want to do some kind of bulk update. If you wanted to do that you would have to go into every single model and save them individually and that could be a time consuming process. What we're going to do in this video is write some Django admin action functions. And these functions are going to allow the admin user to update the status over a range of objects. And if you're performing these kind of updates, for example, to update the status of an order or to publish a blog post or a set of blog posts at one time, this can be very useful for that purpose. Now I'm going to go back to the documentation for admin actions. There's a link to this in the description. As it says here, Django does ship with a delete selected objects action and that's available to all models. But that's the only admin action I think that Django ships with. We've already seen that in the admin UI, so I'm going to scroll down here. There is a caveat that's worth noting. When you use the delete selected objects action, that's going to call query set dot delete. And basically it's going to take all of the models that you select and it's going to delete them from the database. But the important caveat there is that if you define or override the model delete method, that's not going to be called. So if you have any custom actions that you're performing when you delete an object, that will not be applied when you delete all of these using this action. Now let's go down to the section on writing actions. The documentation uses an article model, as you can see here. When we write the action functions, they have a particular signature, as you can see here. So it's just a normal Python function that takes three arguments. The first argument is the model admin class, and the second argument is the incoming HTTP request. And finally, the query set, that's the third argument. And as it says here, it contains the set of objects selected by the user. So we're going to write a function now. Let's go back to admin.py, and I'm going to write this just above the order admin class. So let's write that now. It's going to be called order shipped action and it's going to take those three parameters and that's the model admin class as well as the HTTP request and finally the query set of objects that the user has selected. So what we want to do in this action is we want to take the query set that the user has selected and we want to update all of those instances to the status of shipped. If we go back to models.py we have this order status and that contains the choices here, pending, shipped and delivered. We want to update the status to shipped for this particular action function. So we're going to take the query set and that's the third parameter and we're going to call the update method for now and we're going to pass a status to that. So we've already imported the order class. We can access that subclass or that nested class, sorry, called order status and that contains the shipped value. Once we've written the function, what we need to do is go to the admin class that we've written here. And there's another attribute that we can use here, another field on the class called actions. And that can be set to a list of different actions. And the one we're going to paste in here is the one that we just wrote. It's this function just above. Now we can save this and let's go back to the admin interface in Django. If we go back here and go to the orders model, this time when we look at the drop down, you can see our new action has appeared in the list. So as well as deleting selected orders, we have this order shipped action that's appeared as well. And if you want to give it a different name, what you can do is you can go back to the function where you defined this action and you can decorate the function with this decorator. It's the admin.action decorator from Django and you can pass a description to that. I'm going to pass this string here, mark selected orders as shipped. When we save admin.py and go back to the admin interface, you can see that is now the name that's appearing in the dropdown. Now let's test this out. I'm going to select the two pending orders at the bottom here and then we're going to go to this new action and when we click go you can see that this returns a page where those two orders have had their status changed and that appears to have worked. If we go into one of the orders you can see the status has been updated. So our action is now working and it's working very simply by updating that field, the status field, for the query set of objects that, you, that the user has selected. Now we might want to perform other actions here. For example, we might want to email the user and tell them that their order has been shipped. So let's extend this function to do that just now. Before we do that, I'm going to go to the Django documentation and this is the page on sending emails with Django. And Django comes with the idea of different email backends. For example, you have a console backend here which you can use during development. So I'm going to copy this setting and there's a link to this in the description, by the way. Let's copy that and we're going to go back to settings.py and I'm going to paste that at the bottom. So we're setting the email backend to the console. And that means that when we send an email during development, the email is going to be sent to the terminal and it's going to appear 
here at the bottom. So that's going to prevent us sending any emails to our customers or users when we're just developing and testing the application. So let's move on. We're going to go back to admin.py and let's email each user when their order has been shipped. So I'm going to iterate over each order in the query set and we can do that with a for loop. And for each order, I'm going to get the user for that order. So that's the foreign key on the order model to the Django user. And user objects in Django have a method called email user. And this method is a wrapper around Django's send mail function. And the first parameter to that is the subject of the email. The second parameter is the actual content of the email. So I'm going to say, dear username, your order with the given ID has been shipped. And the third parameter here is the from email. So it's going to come from this email here, admin at example.com. And I'm going to add one final optional keyword argument here, and that's fail silently. I'm going to set that to false. So if the email fails for whatever reason, it's not going to fail without any feedback to us as developers. It's going to raise the issue and tell us that something has happened. And the final thing I want to do in this function here is I want to use the model admin class, and that's the one that came into this function as the first parameter. We're going to use that and that has a method called message user and that allows you to display a one off flash message on the Django admin. So that takes two arguments. The first one is the request and the second one is the message itself that we want to display to the admin user that performed the action. So this message is going to say selected orders have been marked as shipped and users have been notified. So we've written a bit more code here that's going to update the status of these objects that have been selected. And then for each one of the orders in that query set, it's going to email the user just to inform them that the order has been shipped. And then it's going to send a message back to the admin user at the end of that process, notifying them of the success of this method. Now let's test this out. I'm going to go back to the admin UI. I'm going to change the status of some of these. And once we've done that, notice now that none of these orders have a status of shipped. So what I'm going to do is select a couple of these. So let's select number five and two. And we're going to go to our custom action here. And let's click go. And that's going to perform that action. Now you can see these statuses have been updated. And you can see at the top here that the selected orders have been marked as shipped and the users have been notified. And that comes from our model admins message user method. Now I'm noticing that no email has appeared on the console. And the reason for that is because the users that I added, they don't actually have email addresses associated. So what I can do is go to each user model and I'm going to add an email address for each one. Once we've done that, back on the user list page, you can see each user now has an email address. So what I'm going to do is go back now to the home page and let's go back to see the orders. I'm going to select the same two orders here and we're going to mark them as shipped. They already have that status, but this is going to highlight maybe a slight flaw with this process. When we click go, it's now going to send those emails to the users. And we can then see those emails if we go back to VS Code and we look at the terminal here. So for example, dear user one, your order with ID five has been shipped. And we have the same below for the order with ID two. So the emails are being sent, but notice that what we did in the admin UI was we selected two orders here that have the status already and we're still sending these emails to tell them about that. So basically what we want to do within our admin function, if we go back to the admin.py file, is we want to take the query set that's passed in here and instead of just calling query set.update on every single selected instance, we want to filter that down to only the orders that don't already have a status of shipped. So what I'm going to do at the top of this function is I'm going to create a variable here, orders to ship. And we're going to take the query set passed in and we're going to call the dot exclude method on that. And let's exclude the orders that already have that status. Now I'm going to store these in a variable called orders. We're going to convert what we get back here, the query set to a list, just so that we can store that before we call the update method. So we're going to take the orders that need to be shipped and we're going to use that here and call the update method on that. So this here gives us back the original set of orders that needed to be updated. And we can then iterate over that instead of iterating over the query set. And the purpose of this is that we're no longer going to email every single user that's attached to all orders that have been selected. But instead, we're only going to email the users whose order status has actually been updated from whatever it was before to shipped. And before we test this out, one other thing to note is that you could send this email functionality to a celery task, perhaps. We're not going to do that in this video, but because we're iterating over a bunch of different orders, this could potentially take a long time. For example, if we are updating 100 orders at a time, that's going to send 100 emails to different users. 
and that could potentially take a while. So you could outsource some of this functionality to a Celery task or use something similar to Celery for that. But we'll keep it simple for now. Now with this new approach here, what I want to do is go back to the admin and I'm going to refresh the page. When we select an order that already has the status, when we then perform the action that we've defined, I want to make sure in the console that we're no longer getting the email. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom and that's working as expected. The post request was sent. We no longer get the email output. And the reason for that is because it already had that status and then it was filtered out when we used the exclude method. Now this is an action that allows you to update an order's status to shipped. We're going to copy this and I'm going to define a very similar action function just below and that's going to allow us to update the status to delivered. So let's paste that and I'm going to minimize the terminal and we're going to update some of this. Let's start with the name of this function. I'm going to call this order delivered action and we can also update this description here to delivered and we can update the field on the Django text choices class that we're referencing to delivered. And finally, the variables that are being referenced here, I'm going to update these as well. And the last thing we need to do, I think, is just update the text that's being sent in the email and also at the bottom here in the message that's returned to the admin user. We can then copy the name of our new action and we can go to the class here, order admin, and we can register that by passing it as a second element in the actions list on this model admin. Let's go back to the admin UI. I'm going to refresh the page and let's select order number five and three here. And we're going to use our new action, which you can see has appeared in this list. And we're going to update these to delivered. If we go back to VS Code, I'm going to expand the terminal here. And we can see the two emails that have been sent to notify the users that these orders have been delivered. So our actions are working well. We've registered them with the admin UI. What we can also do is instead of defining these as functions within the module, we can actually write them as methods on the model admin class that we have here. So there is a bit of the documentation for this. So I'm going to go back to Django and it's the advanced action techniques. So actions can be model admin methods. All we need to do there in order to do this is take the function that we wrote and we're going to make it a method on the class by adding self as the argument instead of model admin. So let's just do that just now. It's going to take a second. We're going to start with the delivered function that we have here. I'm going to cut that from the top of the file here and we can paste it into this class. Now we need to tab this over to make it a valid method within the class. And what we need to do is change the instances of this model admin. We can just make that self now because this is actually being defined on the model admin class. So that was a parameter called model admin and at the bottom we can re replace that reference to that with self.messageUser. And finally, because we now have this as a method on the class, we can reference the name of the method as a string here in the actions list. Now I'm going to do the exact same for this action and we'll resume the video and we can make that a string as well. So now our order admin class contains two methods for each of these actions to mark the order is shipped and also to mark it as delivered. So let's now just test that everything is still working. Let's go back to the admin UI. I'm going to select the order number five and three and let's mark these as shipped and click go. That seems to still be working. That has updated the order status to shipped. And if we take the order with the ID of one and two here, Let's mark these as delivered and click go and you can see that that has updated. So in this video we've written two custom Django admin action functions and registered them with the order models admin interface. And you can see it's quite simple to register and define these admin functions here. You can do it directly on the model admin class and you can just pass the request and the query set of selected objects into the function and perform whatever logic you need in that action. And there's some more advanced things that we can also do here, such as providing intermediate pages before the action is performed. You can see that with the delete action, for example, if we select two of these and click delete, we have an intermediate page before we confirm that the action should occur. So we can define that. And if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. And what I'm going to do in an upcoming video is look at this admin theme for Django. It's called Django Unfold. And this is a modern theme that's built with Tailwind CSS and it updates and modernizes the Django admin. We're going to dive into some of the functionality and the look and feel that that provides to the admin. That's coming up very soon, but that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you want to support the channel, we have this coffee page here. And many thanks again to everyone that helped reach this goal here. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.